Are those storm clouds moving in over the west bank of Egypt? Could be, because this week we are electrifying Egypt. Yes, all kinds of scintillating things are coming. Stay tuned for all of the shocking details. You were tuned into the video version of Mr. McCoy's Summer Adventure Weekly Log. There's also a s'more version. In the event that a last minute change needs to be made, the s'more version is the version to access. However, both versions contain essentially the same information. Video version, s'more version, whichever one you access, I have you covered. The details of this week's academic triumphs are coming up next. You can access the links that your child is using in class each day by referencing the s'more version of the newsletter. In math, we've been working with multi-digit whole number subtraction, as well as addition and subtraction word problems. In reading, we've been focusing on finding the theme of a story or drama, perfect verb tenses, comparing and contrasting characters in drama, revising sentences, using details to support inferences in literary texts, ordinate, ordinating and subordinating conjunctions, describing characters and plays, more uses for commas. In writing, we've continued to work on memoirs, studying and planning structures, and also finding the inspiration to draft. And with regard to phonics and spelling, we've been focusing on AL versus EL, I see the ick ending, magic E, and Y as a vowel. Yes, our scientific excursions this week have taken us millions of years into the past and have also whisked us into the future. We've asked these questions. What, why did the dinosaurs go extinct? How far can a whisper travel? What would happen if you screamed in outer space? Why are some sounds high and some sounds low? Yes, science continues to play an integral part in our adventures in Egypt. Our current read aloud, Mystery of the Egyptian Scroll, has come to an end. However, we have moved into the sequel, Mystery of the Egyptian Mummy, both written by Scott Peters. Stay tuned, my alter ego will give you more of the details about Mystery of the Egyptian Mummy. When 12-year-old Zet comes face to face with a whispering mummy, Zet's eyes practically pop out of his head. Goosebumps race down his neck. Why is a mummy haunting his front door? What does the scary monster want? Zet quickly joins forces with his 11-year-old sister Kat and best friend Huey. If they don't solve the mystery fast, things will get downright creepy in their hometown of Thebes. Clues send them tiptoeing into ancient tombs and frantically paddling up and down the Nile on a wild mummy chase. They soon suspect that this will be their spookiest mystery ever. We get to continue with the adventures of Zet and Cat in Mystery of the Egyptian Mummy. Also, daily, your child participates in Literacy Corner. It features informational text as well as literature. And African Folktale Theater blazes on the big screen as well. You can access all of these videos by visiting the s'more version of the newsletter. Many young kids have trouble sitting still and staying focused, but there are ways to help and there are suggestions in this week's edition. They go as follows. Get the yayas out first. Moving the body motivates the brain. Try having your child walk or bike to school, play outside after school, do chores around the house, or play on a sports team. 
Turn off screens and cell phones before your kid tackles homework or anything that takes concentration. Turn off the television, or if others are watching, make sure your child is far enough away that it can't be distracting. Make a to-do list. Uh, having a lot of chores and homework assignments can be overwhelming for kids. Help your child focus on getting things done by making a list together of everything he needs to do for the day or week. Then let him cross off each task as he finishes it. Use signals. Try to avoid conversations when your child is working. Uh, use nonverbal communication. Take breathers. During homework time, make sure your child takes a few breaks after working for 10 to 20 minutes, depending on his age. Have him get up and move around, get a drink, and then get back to work. And now, here is more about how to help your child improve his or her mathematical fluency, keeping in mind that improving mathematical fluency is more than just memorizing math facts. It's all about knowing math. And here in Egypt, your child has the opportunity to play a multitude of games and solve a variety of problems which call upon him or her to use his or her mathematical fluency. Here are suggestions for how you can help your child continue to improve his or her mathematical fluency. Ask math questions and problems aloud, preferably without a visual aid. If your child struggles, encourage him or her to visualize the problem and allow enough time to let your child process the information and generate an answer. Flashcards are great for mental math without pencil and paper to work out the problems in a longer, more structured way. Children are faced with the necessity to solve it in their heads. For kids who have been working on a skill for a while, build speed and fluency with short drill activities that force kids to solve problems as quickly as possible. Be sure not to use this technique in a way that frustrates or upsets struggling kids. Be sure that kids are reasonably comfortable with the skill and provide just enough challenge to work out those mental math skills. And yes, coming next week, more information about how to help your child improve his or her mathematical fluency. Have a question? Give me a call at 816-783-3659. And if you would like to see your uh, Egyptian in action, just follow us on X, Twitter. The link can be found in the small version of the newsletter. Coming next week, it's issue number five, Egyptian Radiance. It's coming your way for the week ending Friday, June 28, 2024. Be sure to tune in this video version, as well as the small version of Mr. McCoy's Summer Adventure Weekly Log.